is up. The 2019 Kenda, Tennessee knockout in Sequatchie, Tennessee. This race is phenomenal. Um, before we get into my race cam footage, I got a, just a few little edits from Saturday and Sunday here. But man, this race is so fun. I mean, the crowd is fun. Everyone is friendly. To be able to go out here and bust your butt and do as good as you can on Saturday, trying to make it to that next race, and then when you're done sitting back watching the pros, I mean, on Sunday, who did we have? The top three was Manny Litton Bickler, uh, Wade Young, Mario Roman, Colton Haker finished up there somewhere in the top five, I think. Um, Cody Webb's out there injured, but rooting on his, his uh, buddies. This thing is just fun, man. Um, so I will tell you before we get into this footage, if you don't have it on your schedule to go next year, put it on your schedule and go. All right, let's dive into it. So there was a little bit of uh, lack of organization, I think, right off the start. So I was in row 29, and these guys behind me, they were like rows 26, 27. I don't know what was going on. This guy's like, hey, just find a spot and get in there. Whatever. So the way they do the start is they send you off in uh, rows of six guys, or seven or eight in this case, and they do that every 60 seconds. Um, so right off the start, a little bit of an enduro course here, just a couple logs. And then we'll go up over a trailer, um, a semi-trailer. And this is pretty cool because what they did here is they, they put that there and created a hill over it so that the pedestrian traffic could go underneath the course to get to different areas of the race. A couple of years, I was there two or three years ago, they didn't have that there and you had to walk across the course, which was really sketchy. So that was a great ad for this year. I'll start off by saying I was super nervous and anxious about going to this race. I mean, I spent a lot of time watching other guys' YouTube videos um, of, of the morning race because that's I, I didn't plan on actually making it to the afternoon race. And so I just wanted to make sure that I was going to be able to do the morning race. And there were videos of bottlenecks, um, guys struggling up hills, overheating their bikes. And so I, I was pretty anxious and nervous just to go to this. Turns out I didn't need to be. Um, the, it was super dry, which I guess it never is um, for this race. It hasn't been this dry ever since they've been holding it, which is like 10 years or something like that. And so there was tons and tons of traction. There were no bottlenecks. Uh, man, watch this. Like this guy's waving people away from this. And so for whatever reason, I thought I'd just go right into it and hit the rut. Like that was stupid, terrible way to start the race. But yeah, so um, there was tons of traction um, and no problem whatsoever. So I, I shouldn't have been as worried about it as I was. Um, so I, I did do I did a lot of prep for the race. I watched a bunch of videos, um, made sure the bike was good to go. I changed my clutch out before going. I run a recluse. Um, and I actually had some problems during this race of, with my bike dying, which is weird since I run the recluse. And I don't know if I over adjusted it or under adjusted it. Um, I did go out and adjust it again here just a few days ago. So um, hopefully it doesn't do it again. I'm going down to the Saddleback Extreme. I'm actually heading down there tomorrow night. So hopefully I don't have that problem there. I think that race is going to be a lot harder than what this one was. Not that this wasn't hard, but I wasn't, um, I wasn't dropping the bike. I wasn't getting stuck. Um, the, another thing that they did different this year is they, there was a prologue on Friday, which I had no idea. I knew that there was a prologue, but I couldn't find any details about what it was, how long it was. Um, and so I went kind of over prepared. I took a, a couple different sets of tires. I took two Ibex rears. I took an Ibex front, a Millville front, just cause I didn't know. Well, it turns out the way they did it was there was a prologue on Friday. Is that right? Friday afternoon, um, which was basically just, it couldn't have even been a mile. You, you um, took off, um, you did a, a grass section, some curves in a grass section. Um, you went down a rocky creek bed, a little bit of woods, um, and that was really it. And so I think it took me f four minutes, four and a half minutes, something like that. It wasn't very long. Uh, but what they did was they used how you placed in that prologue to set your position for Saturday morning race, which is great because in prior years it was based on when you registered. And so there were just people everywhere, fast guys in front, fast guys in back. 
Um, so it worked out really well. Now the downside to that, I mean, I think it was best for the race, but the downside was I just didn't pass a lot of guys and I wasn't getting passed by a lot of guys. I mean, here and there a few, but, but not a lot. And maybe that's good. Um, it ended up there weren't a lot of bottlenecks or there really weren't any bottlenecks. I hardly ever saw anyone. So I guess it's good. It's better than just randomly um, setting people based on when they registered. Um, I hear my bike. Yeah, see there. I, I don't know what the deal is. So hopefully I got that taken care of. I got a race this weekend. I hope, I hope, hope, hope it doesn't do that. Um, so just, I'll tell you a little bit about how I, how my bike was set up. So I ride a 2015 YZ250 FX. I was also really worried that I took the wrong bike to this race because it is a four stroke. Uh, most guys ride two strokes at this race, either 300s or 250s, um, because not only are they lighter, um, they're more nimble, but the, the, the weight that they do have is carried lower on the bike. So like I ride, uh, I race cross country on this FX and I know in muddy races, you know, if, if I drop it a few times and have to pick it up, that it's so top heavy, it just really wears you out. But because it was so dry, um, I, I dropped the bike once and it was just a mistake. So it actually turned out to be a really good choice for this particular race because of all the bottom end grunt that the 250FX has. Um, it just, it was like a, a mountain goat going up some of these hills, just, just wouldn't stop. Uh, so I, I um, that's my bike. I do have a recluse in it. Um, I really like the recluse. I never thought I would, but I put it in a couple years ago, and I don't know that I'd go back. I mean, you can use it if you want to use it. You, you know, you can clutch if you want to clutch. You don't have to if you don't want to. Um, it comes in really handy. Um, it's great for hill climbs. It's great for when you dump the bike. It doesn't die. You can pick it up and get going again without having to start it most times. Uh, so that's nice. So I have the recluse. Um, for the Saturday morning race, I ran Ibex, both front and rear, um, which again, there was tons of traction. I think there probably would have been tons of traction no matter what tires you ran this day because it was so dry. I ran four pounds in the back, five pounds in the front. Um, I probably should have put more pressure in the front because it was faster or it could have been faster than I thought it was going to be. Um, Yeah, that's the bike. Um, my kind of my, my about me and my background. I'm 48. Um, I ride in a C class, so 40 plus senior C class. So I'm not a fast rider. Um, I'm maybe a, a mid to front in my class. And so the only reason I bring that up is I would say if, if this race is something that you've ever been or you've ever thought about doing or were curious about doing go ahead and do it. I mean, e even if it was wet and there were some harder areas, you can do this race um, or you can have fun doing this race. Maybe if it's really bad, you wouldn't finish the morning, but it's still a really good time. Even if you don't finish and progress to the second uh, Saturday race, you get to watch the rest of the amateurs on Saturday. You get to watch all the pros on Sunday. The vibe there is great. Everyone is friendly. It's just a cool race to go to. This guy passed me, um, he seemed pretty quick and then he wrecked here and so I was sitting here waiting because I didn't want to just get in front of him and have him pass me right away, um, but he was struggling so he waves me by, I'm like man I know this guy's going to pass me right away, and he does, yeah, here he comes and the, you can see the rear kick on him here <laughs> over that, over that jump, this guy wrecked once back there, almost wrecked again right there, and then you'll see him again in a minute. He wrecks um, in a little rock bed, and I'm not taking anything away from him. The dude finished probably way faster than I did, um, but just to have so many spills in such a short amount of time, you know, I probably could have stood to go a little bit faster and maybe have some more wrecks and finish better. I ended up only being four minutes out overall from getting into the afternoon race. So they take 180, I think I was 190, 195. It kept changing, the results were changing. Um, but time-wise, I did it in like a, um, an hour and 45 minutes. And it was about four minutes off from 
the cutoff for who went to the afternoon. So hopefully I don't have a conflict next year. I'd like to do this again and actually make it to the afternoon race. It's a little, it's, I shouldn't say it's a little, it's a lot more challenging, not only because they put in some harder sections in the afternoon, um, but you're tired. I was tired when I got back from this race and just imagine, you know, doing a two hour cross country and then turning around a couple hours later and doing another one. And then God forbid you make it past that into Sunday, right? I mean, the, the, the amateurs we saw on Sunday, they just have to be so tired from that many races in such a short amount of time. So no bottlenecks, no bottlenecks whatsoever in this race. I mean, I, I almost feel cheated because it was so dry and I was expecting so much worse. You know, I started out the race just telling myself, I gotta conserve my energy. I'm gonna come up to something really hard and I'm gonna ne need to have some energy for it, so just take it easy. Um, but in hindsight, that was the, the wrong thing to do you know, because those hard sections just never came. Yeah, so going to Saddleback, like I said, heading down tomorrow night. Um, I think that race is going to be a lot harder. I'm probably going to regret the FX. It's the only bike I have right now, uh, so it's going to have to do. Um, I heard Wade Young is going to be there, um, so that's pretty cool. Um, I don't know if there are any other big names. There was a rumor going around that maybe Colton Haker was also going to go to Saddleback. Yep. So we'll find out when we get down there. I'll take some helmet cam video of that race as well. Uh, if I'm not too embarrassed by it, I'll post it. I'm sure it's going to be rough. It is very rocky in this area um, on this property. I mean, I assume the rest of that area in Tennessee is kind of like this. We don't have this kind of stuff out here. Um, we might have creek beds and things like that, but not the, these sections where it's just all different kind, all different shapes of rocks. It was really incredible how much traction there was. was the only bottleneck uh, it's not even really a bottleneck that I came up on now I didn't I went back and listened to it I didn't understand him the guy the track worker when I came through but I don't think it's that they were having problems on the rocks up here I think there was a uh, somebody ran into a, a yellow jacket nest or something take the opportunity take my goggles off you can see I got a, a a gel, like a power gel on my um, bar pad. I never ended up using that. I don't usually take something like that with me for a cross-country race. I usually just take the, the hydration bag. Um, I just wasn't sure what this was going to be like, you know. I just didn't know. Yeah, yellow jacket spray. Um, I didn't end up using it, but it's there in case I needed it. I'm sure I'm going to take one to saddle back. I used my two liter hydration bag for this race. Normally in a cross country, I'll use a one liter just because it's a little lighter. Um, but I, I do have a Liat two liter that I took for this one. You got it, Kevin. Come on, man. There you go. A lot of track workers uh, all along the course, uh, which was nice. I know at one point I came across a guy, um, his brother had been stung by yellow jackets or bees or something. Um, so it's good that these guys are, are around to help. This is the, they call it the downhills or the uphill swamp. Um, they run this um, 
alternate directions each year. So this year we were going downhill. Next year you'd be going uphill. So this year it's called Down Uphill Swamp. Um, the year that I went, they were going uphill, uphill swamp, and man, it was a mess. It was rain. It actually rained on us while we were at the uphill swamp section watching, and bikes were backing up all the way down, um, overheating, couldn't get traction, just sliding all the way up. Um, so going downhill is a little easier, and again, it was so dry, um, there were just no traction issues here. I'll stop and take a little break, just because I'm old and tired. I get going again. Tons of spectators. I mean, it helps, and it also kind of makes you a little nervous. Not really used to that, you know. Like at a cross-country race, you might have a bunch of guys on a on a, a difficult hill or something. Um, but here, there's just tons and tons of spectators. It's awesome. semi-steep downhill. This is a cool section. We came and watched right here uh, on Sunday, right at that bridge. I think this is the hill. This is a long hill. There was one in here that was super, super long. I mean, like, long, like, we don't get those kinds of hills where I'm from in Indiana. Um, not only is it not rocky, but we don't have the elevation changes like they have out here. is probably closer to uh, like when we go out to Hatfield McCoy and ride some of those trails it's a lot closer to that than it is what we ride in Indiana yeah this is the one just really long This guy's down right here. I mean, he's practically to the top. That's it right there. Yeah, this is real different. I mean, I've been used to riding these Indiana cross countries a lot lately where you're, you know, it's they're normally pretty smooth. I mean, we have some technical ones, um, but normally pretty smooth. And, and here, you know, that um, gripping with your, your knees, gripping the tank with your knees is just not that easy when you're going through these sections like this. Got to keep my eye on this guy. Like, he gets squirrely, goes to the right. I'm like, oh, man, look out. Uh, he's going to back up into me. But yeah, it's hard to grip the bike. It's tiring. I, um, so the other thing I did to my bike before this race was I, I softened up the suspension, the, the forks as well as the shock, and I think I went out on the forks five or six clicks or something like that, and I mean, it made it really soft, but I could have gone even softer. I mean, the slow speeds I was going, um, and as rocky as it was, it could have stood to, get, to even be softer. So I may move them out a couple more clicks before the Saddleback this weekend. Hopefully remember to move them back before the next cross country. Yeah, I mean, spectators everywhere. Clapping you, cheering you on, it's amazing. stand you know that's the other thing I don't stand all the time when I'm riding I try to do it as much as I can um, but you ha you had to stand you have to stand at this race if you're not standing 
the bike is throwing you around everywhere. Um, so that's one thing I got to work on. Um, I stood more at this race than I would at a normal cross country, and I know I was feeling it when I got back at the end of this race. My thighs were cramping, so I definitely have to work on that. Yeah, I'm talking about it. I'm telling myself. I saw a lot of people at this race that I know from uh, the internet, you know, different Facebook groups. Um, it's amazing how small um, the racing community is. I mean, I, I saw guys I knew from, you know, West Virginia, um, just all over the country. It's crazy. We're getting towards the end of the race now. I didn't see the mile marker there. But I saw a lot of people down, oh man, that looked bad, that looked painful, um, but I think almost everyone finished the morning race this year, it's crazy, I mean, there were a few DNFs, but I don't think there were many, there couldn't have been more than 10, give or take, DNFs, which is, um, which is really good, and everyone that did complete, I think, except for one person completed within the two and a half hour um, time limit to get your bronze medallion, which is amazing, in fact, um, so many people got the bronze medallion that they ran out of the medallion. So I ended up getting a, a bronze medallion from last year that said 2018. And she said contact her and they'd give me a 2019 later. But um, yeah, that's crazy. Yep, here we go. You know, the, and this wasn't hard. You can see the line to the right's pretty easy. But this is t towards the very end of the race. And you just, you're so tired, you know, by the time you get to the end. I didn't get, there's an enduro section at the end, which you kind of saw in the beginning of this video, that I didn't get on uh, here because my GoPro died. I knew I was only like an hour, or uh, an hour, I knew I was only like a mile from the end of the course, so I didn't want to stop and change the battery, um, so I missed it. Um, yeah, I'm just tired, I was just grunting because it's tired, I was just tired, I didn't want to do any more logs. Right, and that's about where my battery dies and that's it so um, like I said if you guys are thinking have ever thought about doing this race man just do it it's a blast even if you don't complete that first race it's great to go out um, just try do what you can do your best watch the other guys watch the other amateurs and the pros the rest of the weekend everyone is super friendly it's just a great time so thanks everybody for watching um, as usual uh, like subscribe um, and comment please um, I'll continue to try to keep making these. I got the Saddleback, like I said, coming up this weekend. So if I'm not too embarrassed about how I do, I'll make another video there. Um, but that's it. See you guys later.